Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You are welcome to this episode of Church in Your House. Woo. Hallelujah. Father, once again, we appreciate you. Thank you for today. Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you for teaching us always what we need to know. We bless your holy name for another gracious day. Open our inner mind. Give us the spirit of understanding. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, I'm looking at Acts chapter 3. I will read from verse 2 downward. And a, and a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask her of them that entered into the temple. Who seen Peter and John about to go in the temple asked and asked. And Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John said, Look on us. And he gave it unto them expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I known. But such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bone received strength. And he leaped up, stood and walked. And entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Hallelujah. Yeah, the phrase, such as I have, caught my attention. Tomorrow, we're still going to be looking at this portion by the grace of God. But today, we just want to center on such as I have. Peter and John was about to enter into the temple and they saw this beggar. And the Bible said he was lame from the mother's womb. He was expecting money. Let's put it in a raw, plain language. Money. Arm. Drop something. But they look at him and say, hey, look on us. And when they, he had that one, his expectation uh, was high. Thinking big money is about to flow. But they say, silver and gold we have known. That doesn't mean they were poor. You must realize that people drop money at the apostles' feet. But this one, this, your case, doesn't require silver and gold. But there is something we have that is needful for you, such as I have. Give ID. And they say, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And instantly there was miracle. <laughs> they gave him Jesus, and inside of Jesus was that healing. Such as I have, give I thee, instantly. Hallelujah. This place, uh, many years ago, in fact, I would say about 27 or thereabout years ago, as a young pastor, anytime somebody comes to me with a problem, I will be running Helter Skelter physically looking for how to solve the problem. And I will totally forget that the number one thing that is expected of me is to pray. To give that which Jesus has given unto me, which is the master key, the solution, and that's Jesus. To pray in the name of Jesus and decree solution for the problem. But I'll be running here and there. And so one time, it was like me saying, anointing. I don't have, but what I have is all those physical things. Oh, and I changed the concept in as much as I will still do my best in the physical aspect, but I know that primarily I must give that gospel, that Jesus, that solution that is in Christ. I must pray. I must bring in Christ into every situation. And a change came. Somebody who is looking for a job. It's true I could contact one or two, but my contact is limited. And so just contacting people is not enough. I need to pray and release the grace for open door of good job. 
And many times it happens. Hallelujah. Today we must differentiate between charity and the gospel. Charity is a part of gospel, but it's not the totality of it. Sometimes we exchange it. We do a lot of charity, a lot of arms giving, and forget the totality of the gospel. Not preaching Jesus, not praying for people, just because you do the charity work somewhere. I believe in charity work. Our ministry, we do a lot of that in villages. Don't want to stand here and begin to count. It's one main thing we get ourselves involved in doing. Move about that digging borehole, distributing all manner of things. But that will not replace the preaching of the gospel. We must know that all of that is just a miniature part of the gospel. And the totality of the gospel must be released. And that is in the name of Jesus. I remember in those days in higher institution, uh, towards the end of the 70s and 80s, 1970-something, 1980, when somebody is sick, the members of the fellowship will rally around. We will give, we will minister to the person physically. Some people will come, they will prepare food, uh, prepare one thing or the other, make sure the medication available is using it. That is physical, hallelujah. But the fellowship, the brethren will not limit their care to those physical things. Depending on the gravity of the sickness, sometimes we have to arrange ourselves to cover 24 hours a day. People pray and say, you and you and you from 8 to 9. Another set of people from 9 to 10. Another set of people will pray such as we have. We're giving Jesus, we're calling down the power of the living God to take over. It's not enough that we just take care, we carry the person to the hospital. There is something we have that is over and above that. In addition to carrying to the hospital, we must pray. We must cry to God. That is how it works. Hallelujah. And uh, a miracle will happen. We should not think we are powerless. There is no child of God that is powerless. Except you don't know that you, you are a carrier of God's power. And if you don't know, the power can be in you and, and remain dormant. But today, I'm calling on you to realize that you are a carrier of God's power. Hallelujah. And the Lord God will always bless you for doing so. Uh, I, I remember a particular story that happened several years ago when my wife was sick, when she had stage four cancer, and it was like an end has come. It was a bad time. Uh, the real bad issue there was not just because my wife was sick, but a, lot, a number of other problems the devil brought around because of that sickness. I watched loved one walking away from the church. A good percentage of the church member left because a number of them said they can't be in a church where the pastor's wife had cancer. All right, that's not an issue. Some will tell lies before they go. A number of people to stay with us and they were giving such things such as they have, praying along with us. I must not deny them. It was not everybody that left us. A number of people stayed by us and they weathered uh, through it with us. And today we rejoice together. But I want to mention this particular Cameroonian boy, Mpondo Ngando, If Ngando Mpondo. That's his name. Wherever you are, the Lord will bless you. I kept remembering this young man, and I will never forget him. And each time it comes to me like this, I just pray for him. Hallelujah. He was in Nigeria then. He gave his life to Christ through our ministry. And eventually he had this accommodation problem. So my wife and I took him in. And we were living together. It happens that about that time, my wife uh, fell sick and this cancer issue came in. This young boy could not speak English well, but he, 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 he gave such as he had. He would go and stay in the church alone, fasting, and praying to God for my wife to be healed. He would pray and fast all alone. Sometimes he would do seven days all alone. And we stay there. I didn't ask him to go and do that. Even me, that I happened to be the husband of my wife, I couldn't do seven all-round uh, fasting day. I could be breaking, but total dry fasting. 
I, I, I couldn't do it. But this guy would do it. And we pray, such as he had, he was giving. And at some time, he would come and meet me. Maybe, not knowing what I was going to, sometimes as human being, then you just sit down and look at it. Ah, this person too is gone. This person that I thought we were so close is gone. Maybe that was what I was ruminating about. He would just come and say, Pato, Pato, it is where? Oh, that word from him meant so much. The Holy Spirit will just enter into that word and empower it and enlarge it and remove every tension in me. Hearing the person I preached to, eh, now coming to release the word of encouragement to me, ah, I must embrace it. It was so much. And God answered his prayer and the prayer of a number of other people that really love us. My wife got healed. But where I'm going is that such as that young boy had, he gave. Hallelujah. And God rubber stamped it. Such as he had, he gave. And every one of us at one time or the other have said yes to Jesus. You have something. When you have Jesus in you, you have the solution to the problem. And it's expected that you release it. So don't just get busy for physical care alone. Physical care is good. I'm not under my, underplaying that. But we must give such as we have. Always learn to pray for people. Release the word. Release the blessing. If somebody is sick, okay, fine. You maybe you are saying you can go to the hospital. Let me see this doctor. Fine. I'm not saying it's not good. But over and above that, Release the prayer. Gather people together. Intercede. And let God step in into the affair of that person. And I know God will always arise. You have something. Always give such as you have. No child of God is empty. We are carrier of God's power. As long as you have Jesus inside of you, the Holy Spirit is residing inside of you. All he wants is for you to open yourself up for him to walk through you. And there is no, uh, this person is small. He's a young convert. That's an old, no, 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 no. The Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit. And he is there to walk through anybody that gives him the chance to do so. God bless you. Hallelujah. Father Lord, I pray for my people that from this day henceforth, we will live to give such as we have in the name of Jesus. And we have you, we will give Jesus. We will not just do uh, uh, charity work alone. We will preach the totality of the gospel in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And in case you are hearing me and you have not said yes to Jesus, this is a good time for you to do that. You need him inside of you. That's the number one thing you must have. Before you can say, such as I have, you need that Jesus. You need to confess your sin. And invite him to be your Lord and Savior. And he will answer you. God bless you.